Good morning, friends. My name is Miss Robin, and I'm a librarian at the Mount Airy branch of Carroll County Public Libraries. Would you like to play and learn with me today? Yes? Is your grown up around? Grown ups! If your grown up is around, we're going to be moving and singing today. So if you have something in your house that shakes, like maybe a rattle or a shaker is, now would be a good time to find those and like a napkin or a towel that we might have time to shake and wave a little bit later. But if not, no worries because we can shake our hands, right? Right, so grownups, while you're getting those things, how about if boys and girls, we sing a song together, all right? I'm in the mood for playing. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for singing. Hey, how about you? I'm in the mood for learning. Hey, how about you? Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that today. Hey, hey, what do you say? I'm in the mood for that. Yay! If you've been coming to Online Play and Learns, we have been singing that song again and again because that's how we learn things. I bet your grown up could tell you a story about something they were taught that then they never ever did again after they were taught and then you forget, right? So when we do things over and over, it builds those brain connections in a way that we can keep growing and learning, right? Keep doing new things. So I thought I'd teach you something new today, though, about books. Mm -hmm. Did you know that books and people are a lot alike? Yes, they are. Can you take your hand and touch your front? Where's the front? Where's your front? Do you have a front? I do, right here. How about your back? Do you have a back? Yeah, I have a back. Do you have a spine? Do you know what your spine is? I bet your grown-ups could show you. They could run your hand all the way down the middle of your back. That's where your spine is. Your spine is a part of your body that holds everything else together. Yeah, so now here's the really cool part. I'm gonna bring out my book. Here is my book. Here's the front of the book. The front cover right here, just like we have a front. Here is the back cover, just like we have a back. Now, here's the really cool part. This very skinny part right here, the edge, it's called the spine of the book. Did you know that? The spine? If you knew that, you are so smart. Books have a front, a back, and a spine, just like us. And there's more. Some books have this covering on the front. It's like a piece of paper that you can take on and off. It protects the book, and it's called the jacket. So books have jackets. I have a jacket today, too. Do you have a jacket? Did you know how many things people and books had in common? Pretty neat. And grown-ups, before boys and girls start kindergarten, it's a great skill for them to have to know these parts of the book. So when you read a story together over and over again, it's a great idea to go over the parts of the book. Let's talk about this front cover for a minute. The title of the book is, I Want My Hat Back. And the author, that's the person that wrote the book, and illustrator who made the pictures is the same person, John Clausen. And look here, it's a bear. He's, he's not wearing a hat though. I've noticed here that there's this beautiful circle. It's probably hard to, there we go. If I tilt the book, you can see it. So if you're ever stuck trying to pick a book and you don't know how to find a good one, anytime you see a book that has a circular metal on it, it means that people that knew a lot about books think this one is top notch. So that always helps. But let's get back to my bear here because he can't find his hat. 
Have you seen his hat? How about if I turn the book around so we can see the back cover? Oh, do you see that red triangle right there? I think that's Bear's hat. But Bear's lost his hat. What if he never sees it again? Oh no. Wait, we, we saw his hat, right? Do you think Bear might get his hat back? Let's open the story and read a few pages to see what happens. There's Bear. He says, my hat is gone. I want it back. Hmm. Oh, look. Bear runs into his friend, the fox in the forest. Have you seen my hat? No, I haven't seen your hat, says Fox. Okay. Thank you, anyway. Hmm. So Bear goes walking along, and in, on his way he sees a frog. Still no hat. <gasps> there is a rabbit. Hmm, something interesting on this page. Have you seen my hat? No! Why are you asking me, says Rabbit. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen any hats anywhere. I would never steal a hat. Don't ask me any more questions. Okay. Thank you anyway. Hey, poor Bear. So Bear continues walking along, asking animals about his hat. Look how sad he is. Oh my goodness. He's thinking hard thinking hard. Do you want to tell Bear what I want to tell him? Didn't you remember seeing his hat? Yeah, we should be like, but Bear, you did see your hat. <gasps> see that? I think he remembers. Do you remember what animal had his hat on? There goes Bear, running back through the forest to find his hat. Here's my favorite illustration on the whole, in this whole book, right here. <laughs> oh my goodness. Sometimes in picture books, the story is all in the illustration in the pictures. Who's that? Is that Rabbit? And what does he have on his head? <gasps> That's Bear's hat. Hmm. Who do you think is going to end up with this hat? rabbit or bear. All right, well, I'm just going to show you one more picture. This picture right here. Who has who has the hat? It's bear. Now, this is the last page of the book. So this book has caused lots of conversation because how did bear get the hat back? Where's rabbit? What happened to rabbit? Hmm. I know a lot of friends have written stories about what's happened to Rabbit. Maybe you could do that or draw pictures about what happened to Rabbit after he lost the hat. Hmm. Back to the beginning of this book, the author illustrator John Clausen. Grownups, I'm giving you a plug today because especially for reluctant readers, but really for any kind of reader, take your children to meet the author. Let me tell you another story about this book. I met John Clausen. Yeah, it was so cool. It was like better than almost any rock concert I'd ever been to. And John Clausen talked to me and a whole bunch of other children. And one of the children at our meeting said, hey, you wrote this book. I want my hat back. What happened to the rabbit? And guess what? He told us what happened, but I'm not going to tell you. No, I'm not going to tell you because I think it's a lot more fun to pretend and use your imagination. But grown-ups, I'm telling you, take your children to meet authors when you can. Bookstores have events all the time, and these days there are lots of opportunities online to hear them talk about their stories. It's a great way to add an extra layer of, of interest for your child in books. Okay, so enough talking about books. That was kind of fun, and I love bears. 
But that book reminded me that it's really fun for us to move around and play together. It helps prime our brains for learning. And that book was about a bear. And I have a bear friend somewhere around here. Garrett the bear. Is Garrett up there? Garrett! Where's my bear? Garrett, hmm. I wonder where he, oh, do you see Garrett? I see you, Garrett the bear. Yeah, I'm gonna bring Garrett out. Come along, Garrett. Garrett is a black bear. His body is all black. It's so black that it's really hard to see his eyes that are also black, but he has one, two eyes. And one nose right there. And Garrett is the perfect size to sit on my lap. Mm -hmm. Is your grown-up around? Do you like to sit on your grown-up's lap? This is a fun time if your grown-ups are around so that you can sit on their lap and we'll do some bouncing around together. I have received some requests from some of my library friends for our favorite bounces, okay? Because it's fun to do the same things again and again, right? Because that's how we learn. So I was thinking we would go on a motorcycle ride. Would you like to do that? Okay, so Bear, are you ready to go on a motorcycle ride? Yes? All right, let's put on your helmet. And put on your goggles. So you can see. Here we go, ready? Motorcycle, motorcycle, rum, rum. Vroom. Motorcycle, motorcycle, vroom, vroom, vroom. Lean to the left, ah, lean to the right. Go a little faster, hold on tight. Yay! That was really fun. Would you like to go on an elevator ride? Yes, yes. Elevator rides are so fun because we can go up and down. Your grown-ups can lift you up and down, or you can go up and down on your feet like me. You can be Garrett or Miss Robin, whatever you'd like, okay? And we're gonna start, I'll sing the song and we'll sway back and forth, here we go. Oh, the city is great and the city is grand. There are lots of tall buildings on a little piece of land. We live way up on the 52nd floor. This is what we do when we walk out the door. Ready? Take the elevator up, take the elevator down. Take the elevator up, take the elevator down. Take the elevator up, take the elevator down. And we spin around. Yay! That was so fun. That was so fun. And I miss you guys so much. I can't wait till we get to go on an elevator ride together again at the library. But for now, you and me and Garrett can have a lot of fun doing those rhymes and bounces together here. Now, there is one greatest hit song at the library that I do all the time and I don't think since we've been home that I have done this with you, I think. It's time for us to shake out our sillies. Would you like to shake your sillies out with me today? Do you have a shaker? If you don't have a shaker, shaking your hand works just as good. Are you ready? Here we go. Well, I'm gonna shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Shake, shake, shake my sillies out. Shake. Shake, shake my fillies out and wiggle my waggles away. I'm gonna clap, clap, clap my crazies out. Clap, clap, clap my crazies out. Clap, clap, clap my crazies out and wiggle my waggles away. Let's jump, okay? Yeah. I'm gonna jump, jump, jump my jiggles out. Jump, jump. Jump my jiggles out, jump, jump, jump my jiggles out and wiggle my waggles away. Oh, sleepy. I'm gonna yawn, yawn, yawn my sleepies out. Shh. 
Yawn, 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 my sleepy's out. Yawn, yawn. Oh, yawn, my sleepy's out. Wiggle my waggles away. Shh. Shh. Wake up. Yes. How do we wake up? Stretch. I'm gonna stretch, stretch, stretch my stretchies out. Did you stretch so big? Stretch, stretch, stretch my stretchies out. One, big, with your shaker loud, you want to stretch. Ooh. Stretch my stretchies out. Wiggle my waddles away. Hey, one more shake, here we go. I'm gonna shake, shake, shake my fillies out, shake, shake, shake my fillies out, shake, shake, shake my fillies out and wiggle my waggles away. Hey! Good job, friends. Was that fun? Big round of applause. Good job, good job. That was very, very fun. I think now it's time to play a game. How about if we play the I have a box game? This time grown up the way it's set up is that there's some really fun things inside and I was gonna suggest you try this game with some fun things inside because it's a great way to plant a seed for the imagination that then might buy you some play, some downtime free for you and playtime for your children later. Look what I have, a box, that's right. So you can do this rhyme with me and make a box with your fist and a top with your palm of your other hand like this. I have a box. My box has a top. I peek inside and then I stop. I wonder what's inside my box today. Hmm. Can you say the rhyme with me? I have a box. My box has a top. I peek inside and then I stop. Ah, what is that? Oh, it's something big with sharp teeth. A dinosaur. What does a dinosaur say? Rawr! Can you roar like a dinosaur? Rawr! Boom. Boom, boom. I'm going to make dinosaur walk over to the end of my table because there's more in my box. Would you like to look? Here we go. I have a box. My box has a top. I peek inside and then I stop. There's something in my box that goes you know what that could be? It is, did you guess, dog? It is a dog. Look, my dog has one, two, three, four legs. Can you make four with your fingers? Just hide your thumb. One, two, three, four. Oh, this dog, he wants to play with the dinosaur. Here he goes. He's gonna run over there and we're gonna have to see what else is in the box. Are you ready? Let's do that rhyme again. I have a box. My box has a top. I peek inside and then I stop. Shh, it's something quiet. Something quiet is hopping out. <gasps> Can you even see what this animal is? It has such big floppy ears. It's hard to see. Can you tell that this is a bunny? Look on his bottom. He has a cute fluffy cotton tail. At my house in my backyard, I see a bunny hopping around all the time. Hop, 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 hop. Here goes Bunny. He's going to play with dinosaur and dog. Now there's one more thing in my box. Are you ready to do the rhyme with me? Here we go. I have a box. My box has a top. 
I peek inside oh, ah! and then I stop. Something black and a little scary is in my box. Ah! It's a spider. Do you ever see spiders at your house? Look how many legs my spider has. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight legs. Oh my goodness. I know a song about a spider. Would you like to sing a song together about a spider? He's pretty nice, right? Here we go. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain and washed the spider out. Out came the sun and dried up all the rain. And there he is, the itsy bitsy spider went up the spout again. Yay! That was so fun. So now my spider. It's going to go play with the other animals. Do you remember what other animals were in my box? A spider, right? What else? A bunny rabbit. Remember what else? Go. A dog. Very good. And there's one more. Do you remember? The very first animal that we saw, he was big and had sharp teeth. And he goes, oh, here he comes. Oh, it's the dinosaur. Very good. I have a box. It's a super fun game for learning to use your imagination to to be able to use good guessing skills and grown-ups sometimes after these items are set out your friends might want to play with them for a long time afterwards that was so fun i hope you get to play i have a box today with your family that's right but i also have something else here i have my scarf do you have a napkin or a towel or a washcloth that you could shake around? Maybe a favorite blanket? Mm -hmm. We're just going to sing one simple song. You just do what I'm doing. Ready? Do as I'm doing. Follow, follow me. Do as I'm doing. Follow, follow me. Can you shake it up high? Oh, hi, you can't even see it. Or shake it down low. Or shake it real fast. Make some wind. Or shake it real slow. Do as I'm doing. Follow, follow me in a circle. Do as I'm doing. Follow, follow me. Yay! Good job. Whenever I do any kind of fun game with a scarf. I think about when you might be at a dinner where your child needs to be entertained for a while and you might have a napkin nearby. You can practice taking your toy or your napkin and scrumpling it up in a ball like this. Anything to keep your child occupied, right, while you need to be seated. But when we do this, it's actually helping build fine motor skills. So take your napkin or scarf or towel and see if you can crumble it up into your hands like this. Oh, mine's hiding. Is yours hiding? All right, let's make it come out. We'll count to five and then we'll throw, the, throw it up in the air. Ready? One, two, three, four, five. Yay! Should we do it again? See if you can take it in your hand. It's a hard skill to crumble it up in your hand. And hide your scarf or napkin in your hand. Ready? All right, let's count to five again. One, two, three, four, five.
Fly! Whee! Can you throw it up in the air? Maybe you can catch it. Whoosh. I caught it. Did you catch yours? Yay! Good job, friend. My goodness, I had so much fun with you today. Time sure goes so fast, right? We had a good time. We had a great time. Give yourselves a great big hug. We sang a lot today. We moved around today. Give yourselves a great big hug. Thank you, friends, for coming to Play and Learn today. Starting next week in June, Play and Learn will continue through June, but it will be shorter because I think we're all getting out around a little bit more, and I'm hoping that you all will be spending a lot more time outside. But I will see you again on Monday. And remember, you are great. You are smart. You are strong. You are loved. And today will be an awesome day. Bye, friends. Thank you for coming today. I'll see you soon.